Hello, welcome back to the Spider's Web. And in this video, we have a look. We're going to be having a look at this Mesozoic Creatures box. Um, it's a 135 um, scale dinosaur diorama series. It's series number seven from Tamiya. It features a number of different um, Mesozoic creatures uh, an infant Parasaurolophus, an infant Tyrannosaurus. An Oviraptor, a Hypsenoph hang on, Hypsenophodon, a Crocodilia, and an Echaeopteryx. Crocodilia, obviously, big version of what we'd now call a crocodile. And all these kind of creatures, the crocodilias, um, and all these descendants, originated from Ireland, from the Ordoyle family, Crocodile. I'll get me coat. <laughs> right, so we've already done an adult Tyrannosaurus, so this one will go rather well with that. We haven't done any of these other ones. I'd like to get hold of uh, an adult uh, Parasaurophonophus, oh, um, but the Oviraptor and the Hypsilophodon and the Crocodilia are all, on the Archaeopteryx, are all um, full size. So, what do we have? Well, let's have a look on the edge of the box. And here we have um, example, or painting examples. So here we show, it shows an infant, the uh, Tyrannosaurus in shades of blue. And the uh, Parasaurolophus in shades of blue, orange and green. There's browns and greens for this one. On this side you just see the box cover. Small set. And on this side again example paintings for the Crocodilia and the Archaeopteryx. Um, and it shows you a couple more of the creatures you could get. Got that one obviously. Would like to get my hands on that one as well, but it doesn't look as though a lot of them are um, available now. So let's open up and see what we have inside. And this is it. Not a very big box, but it's still in scale with the other dinosaurs we've got. And then we have this. Inside we have important information concerning this kit it's giving step-by-step -step instructions on what to do uh, back of the box just plain so let's have a look at this <coughs> so first off we have the instructions and then it shows you first the infant Tyrannosaurus then the Parasaurolophus and on the other side we have the Hypsilophodon uh, the Oviraptor now this is called Crocodile on here and the Archaeopteryx so they are fairly straightforward there's not, as you saw from the bag on from the bag they're not massive creatures but there we are and here we have uh, a colour chart um, showing what they are and on this side it's all about the look of paints um, just on the sizing bump for the paint system ok so where do we start shall we go in alphabetical order in which case Archaeopteryx first get this open and let's have a look at pieces first these are a bad idea having a green mat <laughs> with these being green but I hadn't realised these were green until I opened up but never mind 
Um, so there we are. I hope you can see them okay. And this is what we have. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get some. Oops. Get a couple of pieces of A4 paper. And work on them, shall we? Oh, that's better. I've been doing some printing over the past few weeks, and this is a an RPG. Let's use that. And there we go. So we're looking at the Archaeopteryx. This is an incredibly large mini. <laughs> Oops, I've just knocked the... Oh. <laughs> I've, ju I've just knocked the instruction book across the room. <coughs> Bear with me a second. Jeez. There we go. <sighs> right. Got it. So, if we look at the instructions, we have the base legs and main body. So the base is A1, which is not that one, A1, not sure whether you can see there, but the sprues are marked A and B. There we go. So A1 is this one. So we'll snip this off and get a knife of opening and we'll just scrape off the edges here just to get rid of that screw connection mark. There we are. Is A1. Let's zoom in a little and see this a little better because this is, as I say, a massive model and I don't want to miss anything. So the next piece is B6 for the legs and B10 for the main body. Like up tricks, as you may have gathered, is the first bird feathered bird for it. Um, oh there we are. So that is B6. So we'll snip that off just like so. And we'll snip gently might I add. We'll snip those off to get the legs and the main body is here and there we go. One, two, three, go. So that's that done. And we'll just once again scrape round to get rid of any of the connection point scars. We're going to have to be very careful with this one, I think. This is not a big mini, as you can tell. So, next thing we need to do oops, is clean up here as well. Forgot to do that. Or almost forgot to do that. That doesn't look too bad. Can't really get in there, so what we'll do. I bought some of these. Prof 
special sanding files. Let's see if these will help matters. Uh, extra fine 400-600 grit. Thicker than I thought they were going to be. Oh well, not to worry. So, let's get our pulse iron go out. We have Tamiya extra thin cement. We'll just put a little bit there and making sure the toes are pointing front. We can pop that. in the like so really nice fit and then you can go on there um at least that's the theory i'm not sure whether to actually put this on the base yet or even at all I'm going to leave it for the time being because I'm not sure what to do with this no I'm not, I'm going to put it on the base so I'll just put a little bit of this cement on there place it down on the base and there we have it, that's the Archaeopteryx. There you go. I'm going to pop him down there, let him dry off. And what's next? So we have Crocodile. So we're not going to count in I for infant on these, it's P and T. So the next one will be crocodile. We have two pieces for this, B8 and B9, as you can tell. So nicely done. B8 is this one. I forgot to show you, B8 is this one, it's the tab with the number on is there, hope you can see it. So we'll snip that off and clean it up a little bit, get rid of any mould line so that we can see. There we are. Not so much mould lines, it's just, uh, mainly it's just... Um, what do you call it? Uh, the actual sculpt itself, but there is a little bit of a mold line on this side and in certain parts. It's not massively intrusive, but I better keeping it off. There we are, that will do, uh, a little bit on his foot, sorry, on his, and B9 is right next to it, just the, which is his bottom jaw, this is going to be quite a, a quick video, <laughs> well, quite a quick assembly. I'm not saying a quick video, but it's a quick assembly. <laughs> so, hope you're all been uh, doing fine. Um, sorry it's taken me so long to get anything out. I have been working on something which will be coming out um, in 
it'll be coming out next month, mid middle of next month it will be coming out, so watch out for that. Um, it's a little project, so I've tried something new, unfortunately I've not managed to catch all of it on camera. Well, I did shoot it all and had issues with uh, the actual, whatchamacallit, um, memory card in my camera. I had to get a new memory card after shooting some stuff because it just it managed to lose all the data before I uh, moved it over to the computer to start editing. So it's a case of lost most of it. I'll talk you through when it comes round and you'll see what I mean. Or when I start the video, sorry. I'm too busy concentrating on what I'm doing to actually think about what I'm saying. Yeah, so I did start off filming everything, but technical issues, lost the first part, and this is not going good. It's not going well together at all. it in together and I hope that helps matters. Add a little bit of glue here and there. And put some on this side as well. Yeah, weird in it. The ones I've done so far, this is the one that's causing me problems. <laughs> it's, only, it's only a model made up of two pieces, but it's not playing nice. Um, but I can't we can sort it out at a later date, but there we have the crocodile. And his cousin, his female cousin. Alligator. And his other cousin that uh, was a male model and turned to a recording, art track, recording artist, a Nick Kamen. This is getting silly. I'm giving up. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so. And there we are, that's the walking handbag out of the way. Let's go on to the next one. So, if I remember my um, alphabet correctly, Hypsilophodon is next. And that is a bit more of a complex construction. So we need, do we need anything from the B sprout? Yes we do. B3. Okay so B3 is this one. So we'll snip that off. And everything else is A. Uh, so we need A8, which is this piece. You can see it there, that's that piece. Dump. Dump. I say 8. We want A3, which is that piece there. Uh, 
we want A2, which is right next to it, just there, upside down on the camera. I know, but sorry about that. So that's the both legs. Uh, two arms is a sorry, one arm, which is a five. If I can find that, so that is up there. Okay, so which is this one. And I think that's all. So, first of all, let's have a look at these pieces. Do we need to... Yes, we do. Just a little bit here. Where it was attached to the sprue. Quite a bit there where it was attached to the sprue. And there. Any more lines as such? Not really, just a few little lumps and bumps here and there. Let's just get that out of the way. Yep, that's it for mold lines. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's put him his arm on first before we do anything else. Just like so. His arm on. That's his arm off again. And that's his arm on again. Now let's have one that's drying. We'll have a look at his legs. A little bit here. This leg. Let's do that. Put that on there like so. And then let's have a look at this side. A little bit more of a mold line on this one. For some reason there's one just there on the bottom of his leg and the area where I snipped it from the sprue and this part here well, that's it that goes in there like that There we are, and da da dee, dee dee dee, on the base, da da da, oops, go on Stephen, don't be so clumsy. And there we have our hips and offered on. There we go, nice. And again, we'll paint these up. And so, so next in the alphabet of dinosaurs, we have Oviraptor. <laughs> Of dinosaurs, what the hell am I talking about? You idiot. Right, so, all of your raptor, we have uh, part B2 on the B sprue. So we get back to the B sprue, and B2 is this one. Oops, so snippety 
snip that off and then over to a sprue where we get a10 which is the again once again upside down a10 the which is this chap there we are we want a6 which is the as next to the um for the previous dinosaur the hips off it on and then we want a11 and a12 which are both down in this corner there we are so 11 and 12 these down here. So I've got all the pieces sorted out. So let's clean them up shall we? Make a start on this one while I've got it in my hand. There we go and we'll scrape away. Not too heavily. Don't need to Take too much off. We've done that one. Let's get this other leg done. And again, all we're doing here is just tidying up where we snipped off from the sprue. And if we see any mold lines at this stage, we can get rid of them. Um, I have a tendency of missing mold lines when it's unpainted, and I only find them when I start painting, which is blooming annoying, but it happens. Sometimes these mould lines are very, very stealthy and they just hide in plain sight until it's really too late to do much about them and then they just peek out and say, ha ha, you missed me and then you've got the choice of either scraping off paint and repainting or just leaving them and saying, oh well, never mind I tried. <laughs> well, if you do miss the other mold line, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. You should train you to be a bit more observant, observant. But as I said, sometimes with unpainted minis, it's difficult to see the mold lines. You think something's a mold line, it turns out to be a bit of detail. Um, so, you're better off checking mould lines after you've primed them. That way, if you miss any mould lines, you can scrape them off and reprime. I just need to prime that area. If you miss it completely and you've painted it, uh, your options are very limited then. You either strip it down, remove the mould lines and repaint it again. Uh, just scrape off the mould lines and try and touch up as best as you can colour matching. I'll just leaving it as it is and saying, ah oh, well, never mind. There we are. That's a bit of mould line there. Yeah, I'll say it. If you see them at this stage, all well and good, get rid. This is the easiest and best time to do it, but yeah, as I say, don't beat yourself up if you miss them. So, let's get this here. You may have noticed I'm not bothering trying to dry fit because the only position in one, one way and this glue doesn't dry straight away, so you've got a little bit of time before the glue dries to make any adjustments you need. Oops. You see what I mean about the glue not drying straight away. And 
show you. That's that bit. Now we have this one here. There we go. That fits in there. Just need to clear a little bit of waste product out. Well. Where I've been scraping, some of it's not um, not been brushed off. And then we have this piece here, which goes on there like so. And then. Oops. So you know what I think I'll do, add a little bit more glue to this. It looks as though there's not that much on it in the first place. And there we are. That's that bit done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it round a little bit in the stand, which will give it a better base to stand in. And I think I may need to go over the front of its face. Looking at it, also there's a little, a little bit of a mould line there. And one at the bottom of what I'm going to refer to as his chin. There we are, that is the uh, Oviraptor. Let's move that out of the way so we can see that one. There we are. And now we get on to the big ones. So the next one in our, <laughs> shall we say, alphabet of dinosaurs is the Parasaurus, which is this one. So we don't need anything from the bee sprue. And this is the one we're going to be doing. This is the biggest one in the box. Um, should I do the biggest one last? Or? No, no, we started off doing alphabetically, so that's what we're going to carry on doing. So we want, in order, A4, which is that one. Uh, A7, which is this one, one half of main body, Blink. A9, which is this side of the main body, one Two, three, a nine, and then thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen, which are these two here, which finishes off this sprue. One, two, three, four, five and six. So that is that sprue cleared in one piece, so I'll put that out of the way. And then it's concentrates on clean up once again. So we'll just make sure that all the areas 
where we um, snipped from the sprue is cleared. I cannot emphasize how important this part is because sometimes you'll get it sort where it sort of like digs in to here a little bit and you don't get a proper join. So take some time at this stage to make sure that it will, if nothing else this area is flat so you can get the proper join with the glue. So thankfully we've no issues with this one. Um, in that regard, using flat, using snips with a flat side like these are, as you can see, the helps in that respect. So there we are. That's the bit made up as is. Just need a little bit more here. Sorting out, and then we can make a start on doing all this bit. This goes on, it seems to dry, well, evaporate almost instantly. I've never used this thin stuff before. Was the other one I could get at the time. In fact, it's extra thin. So I'm going to put as much as I can on in the hope that some stickiness remains, and then I'll probably go around the edges once it's together to make sure there is a bond. And if you're doing something bigger than this, and it's not quite setting up as you want it to do. Like here. You can always tie rubber bands to it until it does dry. Or use some masking tape. Sometimes you get the ones that just really don't want to go together terribly well. It happens. It's the joys of making model kits. And I use the joys, the word joys, quite wrongly. Um, but you know what I mean. It's just one of the things you have to deal with pieces not going together properly, gaps in your minis. These can all be filled in later on. There are plenty of putties and things like that on the market where you can, that you can use to fill in any gaps. And you can also make your own. Um, all you need to do is just put some chopped up sprue into this kind of glue and let it melt for a while. And you've got some lovely little filler. There we are. I'm just going to get rid of some mold line here. And on the top. If there's a bit of a mold line down here you don't need to be a as concerned because this is the bottom of the model and if you're going to be gluing it down to something you can always disguise it by putting stuff like bushes or something underneath it to disguise where it is but you always make sure that the areas that you can see that you're going to see all the time are free of mold lines okay let's go 
to other parts of this mini now. Um, where the keep saying mini, so this one's a model, not a mini. <laughs> This is a scale model. A mini is a gaming piece. I should remember that. But I'm so used to doing minis that I call everything a mini now, but that's the general dif difference. You call a scale model a mini in front of somebody who makes scale models, they will jump down your throat. It's one of those things. So <laughs> but as I do both, or I'm getting back into doing scale models. I'm using the words interchangeably because, especially at this size anyway. And to be honest, when I've been doing when I've been making doing minis, I've called them models in the past, so. on there like so. Little bit of the old glue and blop. There we go. That's one arm done. Leave that to set a little bit while we tidy up this arm. Had to check then whether it was actually the bit where it was attached to the sprue or whether it was some form of detail because it looked a little bit wavy. I thought it might have been scales or something, but it was the area that was attached to the sprue. There we go mold line down here and here. No flashing on these models you may have noticed because they're a larger scale than a mini so it tends not to be as much flashing on these. There we go, so we'll pop that there and There. Why are you coming apart when you shouldn't be? That's why, because I've not put you in the right at the right angle. There we are. And next, leg zizzies. So this one seems to have quite a bit of a mold line going down it. Again, gently, you don't want it to be taking off. It's, it may sound, but I'm digging in. I'm not, I'm just literally just scraping over the top surface of the, of the model. I'm not putting much in the line of pressure on these at all. I'm going to get, I'm going to have to get some thick polystyrene cements because I don't like this one terribly well. There we go. Do that and then while that one's drying we'll have a look at this and again move or remove any areas of mold line or where, we've, where it's been attached to the sprue and I'll keep going on about the same thing over and over again but it's good to try and get it into your head that you need to get rid of these points especially the areas that will attach to the sprue they will make your model your mini look absolutely hideous Mold lines can be annoying, but not as bad as connection points. 
And there we go. This really does evaporate quite quickly. And that's it for the para <coughs> parasaurolophus. Apart from that bit of mould line there. And I only noticed it when I picked it up then looked at it side down. It's right underneath its horn or its head crest or whatever it may be. There you go. Happy there. Oops. Couldn't twist it then. But that's the mini. And it just stands up on its own. Just like that. And go over there and finally is the baby t-rex these are the only pieces that are left now to do so i'll just snip them all off we don't need to go through what they are or what numbers they are because we're not hunting around for them we can see them quite clearly there's no extra pieces on these sprues What's on the sprues make up the uh, make up the dinosaurs or the pieces of um, well, the make up the model and there's no extras. And this is the most complicated of the models because it may not be the biggest of the models, but there are more parts that need gluing together. And that's the sprue emptied, nothing left. So we'll pop that down there. We don't need destructions. So let's get on with cleaning up the mini, oh sorry, the pieces. Then we can get it all attached. So we have the front. So we have the feet that attach onto legs. Now I should, this is where I should have paid some notice of which of the ones I had because Does that look right? And does that look right? Oops, that won't look right. Okay, so I think I know what I'm doing. Let's clean up this leg. First off. Um, now. this on here and then that on the just like so now while that's drying we can work on this leg after looking at that does anybody else want KFC? <laughs> so, okay, cleaning off all parts of the leg where we see 
any flashes or any lumps and bumps that shouldn't be there like this particular one here which is where it was attached to the sprue and then we can use the glue I think I have put these on the wrong legs. No, I haven't. I got it right the first time. This is as I because I didn't check the numbers of the pieces that I was removing. I didn't I don't know once I cut them all out I didn't know which number was with which particular piece. And that caused me some issue. But this one okay doesn't have the best fit but it's a now I've pressed it in a little more, yeah, it, it goes in really well. I just haven't pressed it in far enough and that's what confused me. <laughs> so there we are. Um, it did, didn't look right when I put it in, when I put it together at first. But, yeah, once we, once we get it sorted, it's right. There is a slight difference in size between the two, or size and shape, so it didn't fit together right when it was the wrong one, if you get me drift. So there we are. That goes in there, like so. Once again, just going to put everything, put all this on the inside of the model as much as I can, just so hopefully some part of it will hold together and then I'll come back and add more to areas where needed. And I prefer using the thicker stuff but I couldn't get any at the time and I got this so I had to get this one and as I said the first time I've used the extra thin stuff um, don't think I'm using it correctly I think it might be a case of holding it together like this and then applying it it will seep down into the join but when you're used to using things a certain way old habits sometimes are hard to break Oh yeah, so that's the main body put together. Get the legs on.
けど。Uh, so that's together okay. I、um, just need to push these a little bit. So which arm is this? This one. We need to cut anything off this. Trim anything, not trim anything down. Scrape anything off this. A little bit there. Just what was attached to the sprue. That's about it. I think I should have put the arms on before the legs. But never mind. Oops. Not cleaned this arm off yet. Area. Better, and we'll just a little bit on the footsies, and just before we put it onto the base. There we are, ready to join Mummy T Rex. When we get her painted, we'll do these both together and see where we go. Okay, so we've done T Rex, Parasaurolophus, the Omniraptor, the Hypsomophodon. Crocodile and the biggest of them all, Archaeopteryx. Put it up there. So, there we are, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it.、Um, we will be doing a lot more over the course of the next few months, in fact, 12 months, all being well. But this is the first video for this year and I'm looking forward to getting back into the swing of things and making more and more videos.、Uh, but I can only do that with a little bit of help and support. So if you would like, or if you've enjoyed anything in this video, you found anything useful, or you've picked up anything, then please give us a like. And possibly subscribe. It's totally free to do. There is absolutely no charge for liking. There's no charge for subscribing.、Um, there's no charge at all for supporting this vid, for supporting this channel. If you would like to help financially, though, we have、uh, Patreon and we have、uh, Buy Me a Coffee. 
uh, the links are in the description below. Um, but there we are, that's all I can say about that. There is no obligation to go to any of those, but if you would like to help out, it would mean a lot to me and would help fund the channel a little more and help me get more equipment and more things to uh, show off on the channel. So, that being said, from all my little friends here, <laughs> um, say hello to my little friends, but also say farewell to my little friends. You will see, be seeing them in the months to come as we do painting videos. But for now, that's all we have time for. I hope you've enjoyed it, and until next time, as always, stay safe, and take care, God bless, and bye for now.